There we go. So, I gotta get YouTube going as well over here. <clears throat> Trying something new tonight, uh, going Facebook Live and YouTube Live. Um, I just, I'm missing Instagram tonight, but that's okay. I wanted to talk about um, a couple of really simple things for uh, buyers out there who are um, looking to purchase and uh, are utilizing lending. So they're not cash buyers. Uh, majority of the people out there who are buying homes today are, are probably going to have some sort of financing in place. Lots of things that um, you know buyers can overlook to cause uh, deals to fall through or to cause their life to be uh, much more stressful than it needs to be. So a couple of points I want to, to just touch on this evening are around um, ratios. So your debt to income ratio, which you may or may not know what it is. Hopefully by the end of this video, you will have a, a better understanding of what uh, debt to income ratio is, how it's calculated, what the front end ratio versus the back end ratio. Uh, hopefully if you have a really good lender, uh, they're going to go through this and make this very clear with you, uh, hopefully up front, um, so that you're comfortable with, uh, you know, the price point that you're going to be looking at. My clients, uh, when we're looking at, uh, you know, my buyer clients, I want them to go through and have this analysis done on the front end just to alleviate any unnecessary, um, you know, stressors that they may run into. Um, throughout the buying process. For example, um, somebody who doesn't uh, have a good understanding of what their uh, front end or their back end ratio or their overall debt to income ratio is may go under contract for a home that they um, you know, can't afford. And, uh, and they fall in love with that home and uh, realize, you know, after they've gone around the contract that it's, uh, you know, they can't afford it. So that's something that really would put unnecessary stress in, in someone's life versus if they had a very clear understanding of what their, uh, buying power was on the front end before they go out and they look at houses. Now they know exactly what their price point is, exactly what their budget is and they're not um, you know, over leveraging what their buying power is. So that's the debt to income ratio. The second thing I wanna just touch on briefly are contingencies. I've talked about this in the past before, uh, but in my opinion, this is something that is hugely overlooked in the real estate industry. Uh, I've run into a couple of situations where um, you know, my clients have been unclear with contingencies because uh, throughout the, the contractual uh, real estate process, you've got due diligence, you've got the financing contingency, you've got the appraisal contingency, and maybe during due diligence, there is an amendment to address concerns. <clears throat> Excuse me. Maybe during due diligence, you have an amendment to address the original contract. And the contingencies uh, on after due diligence may or may not be affected by that amendment. So it's hugely important as an agent that you're educating your clients um, on you know where we're at within the contingencies and how those are going to affect the overall uh, landscape of the transaction. And so, that is something that I want to briefly just touch on and make sure that, you know, if you're a buyer or a seller, uh, for that matter, that you're familiar with, uh, if your agent isn't making aware of it, or maybe you're doing a deal, uh, you know, without an agent involved, you may still have contingencies in the contract. So those are something that you definitely don't want to overlook and lose track of, uh, throughout the life cycle of that, you know, transaction. For example, I just had, a situation a couple of weeks ago where there was a house my uh, clients wanted to purchase and um, they were 
there was multiple offers. <clears throat> there was multiple offers on this particular uh, property. I reached out to the uh, seller, the, the listing agent, and uh, found out that there was a, you know, an offer that was already accepted. So uh, what my clients wanted to put in a backup offer because the, the primary offer had uh, some due diligence period. There was lending involved. There was also what's called a, uh, a primary residence contingency, which basically means that that contract was contingent upon them selling their, their other home. And so whenever there's a primary uh, residence contingency involved, um, you know, the lenders really kind of are in the driver's seat there. So if you have a, if you were in my position, you're, you're the backup contract, you definitely are putting in a backup offer in that situation because there is so many things that could go on uh, to cause that primary deal to fall through. Long story short, they didn't end up, uh, they ended up releasing the contingencies, so the primary offer closed the deal two days ago, but it doesn't always happen that way. So uh, if you have multiple offer situations, uh, always important to go ahead and you know spend the time and, and fill out that backup offer and, and go ahead and submit it so that if something does happen, um, there's a, a million scenarios that a, a primary residence contingency deal could fall through. So um, you, you don't ever want to overlook those. But circling back to the, the debt to income ratio, front end, you know, back end, and the, the overall ratio, if <clears throat> you're a buyer, and you have a lender and they haven't had this discussion with you, or if you have an agent and they haven't gotten you in contact with a lender and th this conversation hasn't taken place yet, um, you know, that should be concerning for you uh, because you're uh, potentially, you know, wasting your time. Whenever I'm talking with clients or whether, whenever I'm, you know, dealing with transactions, I always want to make sure that on both sides, I'm not wasting your time, and uh, at the same time, I don't want to waste my time or my client's time. So, if we have all of the you know financing in order and uh, all of the situations in order um, that are going to you know take place throughout the the transaction, and we're doing it in an intentional way in in an order, then it just makes your life a lot easier. So. That's all I have for you. Uh, hopefully you enjoy this uh, video, find it helpful. And it's my first YouTube live video, so hopefully we get some views here. Facebook Live, have a great night. Thanks for joining if you popped in. I don't even know how to turn off YouTube Live.